I'm Arlene from Beacons of Balance, and I want to welcome you to our show today. It's very exciting. Today, we're speaking on animal communication, and that's going to be the topic for the month. Each month, we um, come up with a topic, and each week, we um, speak about different facets of that topic. Today, I'm here alone. You see there's someone missing. There's another person here, but that's not who we're talking about. Uh, Linda's missing because she came out with her book, and she's off at book signings and things like that, so she's busy. But she sends her regards. Hello. I would like to introduce to you our lovely Mary Albanese. Uh, Mary Albanese is with uh, Zen Zoo Animal Communication and Energy Work, name of her business. After retiring as a teacher, Mary took Reiki classes and her teacher suggested working on animals since she was considering contemplating a second career as a vet tech. After searching the internet, Mary came across the name of Joan Ran Ranquet. Is that the Ranquet. way you said? Ranquet? Yeah. yeah. The world's top animal communicator. Uh, Mary was formally trained and mentored by Joan and has worked on hundreds of animals and all sorts of species in various habitats and conditions. Various animals. So have you worked yes. on large species, not just dogs and cats? And oh, yes. Thank you so much, Arlene and Linda in absentia for having me. I've, I call myself a non-denominational communicator um, because I have worked on pretty much everything, um, although I guess I'm a little light on amphibians. I've not worked on alligators or crocodiles yet, and I do say yet because I don't rule anything out. I've worked on lions, tigers, and bears Wow! in, in person. I, yeah. Um, in, the cage, yeah. in the cage with them or outside? No, no, no. Um, Mama didn't raise no fool. Uh, <laughs> so I did not go into the enclosure. Um, but I'm, I'm, uh, flipping through some, some pictures that I have because they're, uh, certainly the more interesting ones or the more exotic ones that I've worked on. And they certainly appreciate the communication and energy work, just like domestic animals do, because, Hey, let's face it. We all like to be heard. Yeah. And so I was down in a sanctuary in Florida. Actually, this was several years ago, pre-pandemic. And it was a very interesting place because they had uh, several hundred different species of animals. And I got to meet up with some tigers. Um, they had a lot of big cats. They had lions. They had tigers. They had uh, several species of monkeys. I was able to communicate with them and do some energy work, um, especially on the tigers. Um, and I worked on a tiger who had anxiety. And after communicating with her, I found out a lot of uh, what her issue was was that she was bored. And so I got to work with her on that issue. And after tapping on her for a few sessions, we got to get past that. You know, that's her pre post session. Oh, my Lord. Oh, um, beautiful. And she's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, quick and, question Do they, um, since they're captive and they're enclosed, do, do did you find that being that way now out in the wild that they resented that and felt? No, not that particular place. Their turnouts were really huge. They were on many, many acres. And so these animals were able to come and go as they pleased. They okay. weren't restricted. They didn't have, okay. you know, closed it, in. Um, closed they in, weren't like closed studio. in. Yeah, they were able to come and go when and if they wanted to. You know, that was where I got to meet her as well. You know, she was an interesting story. Um, I was down there with yeah. a couple of my friends who were also communicators. And we found out she liked music. And so, you know, her anxiety issue was that you know, she also was all tense. And we found out we were able to solve that way with a couple of rock speakers near her enclosure. And so she was much calmer with music. So were, were these animals, did you film them like pre-session um, and then post-sessions? Yeah. One of um, her problems was she would come at the bars and she would be aggressive in stance. And this was a place that ran with donations. And obviously on visitor day, that was a tough situation um, because it was off-putting. And so music solved her issue. That's and fascinating. So, yeah. Really, really interesting. You know, we were able to work on some sick animals while we were there. Yeah. And it well, was let, me, let me ask you um, what exactly does an animal communicator specialist do? I mean, how, how do you do your work? How do you tap in and 
It's all through intuition. And I always tell people, I'm not special. We all have intuitive ability. I work with other people to develop their intuitive skills. There are a lot of people who want to do this the way I do it and do it for a living. And this certainly was not the path I thought I would take when I retired, believe me. But, you know, the doors have opened and this is the direction I'm going in. You know, I really did think I would be something like a vet tech, but once I got involved in Joan's coursework, it just lit a fire in me. So when I work with a pet, I get things in terms of images. I will see things in the best way. I guess I could explain it is the same way as we see things in our peripheral vision. And so um, it's as if I'm seeing it out of the corner of my eye. So I'll get a picture or sometimes I'll see words, or sometimes I'll hear words, and sometimes they're spoken with inflection. So it could be something someone has said to a particular pet, a particular animal, or I will smell something or taste something. I will feel sensations in my own body. Uh, that comes into play a lot when I'm working with a pet who's not feeling well. I know lots of times pet owners will come to me because they want to know, you know, if their pet is not feeling well, is it that time? to um, intervene, to take the pet to the vet, you know, what, what's wrong with a pet? They're a medical mystery. Mm -hmm. We've done all these tests and we don't know what's going on. You know, can you help us? And I have no medical training whatsoever. I was a high school English teacher. I don't know. First thing about, you know, anatomy, physiology of pet. And have so I was going to late, have but I can feel it. Yeah. And so I can say, you know, maybe ch check here. Or, or look here in, in, in the stomach area. It might be an area that a vet maybe hasn't considered. And so maybe we do some other testing and, you know, it's helpful in that way. So it's, it's, um, it's intriguing. Has that um, worked out? Have, have you seen results yes. when you've guided them to say yeah. that they brought it to vets in that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm generally spot on. Yeah. Uh, you know, well, um, I'm, I'm going to correct you on something. You are special. We're all special. No, and oh, yes, in, in my own right, you're, I suppose. You're, you're a conduit for this do happening. This. And it's it's a very, um, people love their animals and pets are special to us. Um, had you I'm had fortunate, Arlene. I love what I do um, and, and I get to do it every day. Well, they said uh, you and, love and what I you love do. sharing it. Sure. You know. had, did you have abilities in the intuitive, well, we all have our intuitions, but did we you do. have abilities um, when you were younger? Did you communicate did. with uh, your pets when you were younger? Not so much with my pets, but I would get things intuitively, mostly through dreams, uh, you know, throughout my life. I, I suppose it started when I was in my late teens, but, you know, I never worked with the skill set. I was, I was too busy. My mind was full of the detritus of everyday living. Um, and it really wasn't until after I retired and kind of settled into a meditative practice and got into energy work that I really started to tap into the skill set because that really opened up the intuitive conduit for me. And and then, you know, when my Reiki master teacher suggested I work on pets, I'm a typical type A personality. And now I don't know enough. I need to know more. I Googled animal energy work and Joan's name popped up. I emailed her and I was shocked when she emailed me back. And we spoke on the phone several times and her, her basis of operation is in California. I'm in Connecticut. She asked if I go to the West Coast. Nope. Do you come East? No. And lo and behold, a few months later, though, she did come East. I started with a, a weekend workshop with her and the rest is history. I mean, I signed on with her and for her program. I trained intensively with her for 18 months and wow. shuttled back and forth um, from here in Connecticut to California several times and Zoomed when Zoom wasn't Zoom, right. um, you know, and, and so integrated into our lives and worked with hundreds of animals under her tutelage and then started my own business. And I've worked with thousands of animals in different situations since then. And how long have you had... How long have you had your business? I started my business in 2017. Okay. It's it's just been quite the ride since then. So so let me ask you. So when you started in 2017, were you physically going out to places to see pets and, and owners and zoos? And I do still at times, but most of the times I work remotely with animals around the globe. And certainly that doesn't limit the information that I get or how effective my energy work is. It's the same. 
you know, as whether I'm there. And I always tell people, you know, because sometimes people will say, uh, you know, I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to see my dog or I want you to see how my horse is behaving or you have to see this. I'll send you a video. Just send me a picture. I'm fine with that. You know, I, I'm, I just prefer to work that way. And, and I don't really need it. It's not necessary for me to go to a particular place because for me, that blocks out an entire day out of my schedule and it limits how many animals that I can work with. A lot of times I'm in the middle of emergent situations. Yeah. And you know, as you as you know, and as I know, because uh, I do energy, uh, you know, I'm certified in different modalities. Many times I find distance healing and working that way is actually more intense. You get more out of it even than being one-on-one -on -one close to to exactly or something so it does work exactly. it does yes work that way mm -hmm. yes yeah so um so you trained under Joan right I did and Joan is one of the pioneers in using these energy modalities on animals the energy modalities that I use like EFT Reiki is one certainly but um EFT therapeutic touch bioscalar wave those are a few of them She's one of the pioneers in using those people uh, modalities on pets. And I don't use anything on your pet, let's say, or someone else's that I haven't used on myself or on my own dog. Explain EFT because some our listeners may not EFT know. EFT is, is tapping, tapping, yeah, tapping. Um, yeah. emotional freedom technique. Yeah. Nick Ortner, who's from Connecticut, um, down in Newtown area, is a big name in tapping. He's a great guy. He was at Sandy Hook, as a matter of fact, four days after that disaster that happened. And um, he's he's wonderful in that area. Not familiar with that, yes. Yeah, he in EFT is incredibly effective for many reasons. It works on grief. It works on anxiety. Uh, I use it a lot when I'm working with a lost animal because many times they're in fight or flight. I use it with their parents because... They're stressed as well. So, you know, I'm I'm working with people as well. I'm working with whole families at times, you know, because they're in different situations that are causing a lot of stress to a family group. Sure. So I just don't isolate a pet. You know, it's it's everyone. Do you find a communicating funny question though? Talking with a female animal versus a male animal is a difference. Females have so much more dialogue. I'm wondering in the animal kingdom, <laughs> do females talk more than the males? <laughs> I have not noticed that to be truthful. Um, <laughs> but I will say this: I find it so amusing when I'm working with a multi-pet household when they talk about one another. Because oh. <laughs> it's it's sometimes really hilarious what they have to say about one another. And I when a pet lies, and, and I say this really loosely, they lie like two-year-olds because the lies are so transparent. You oh, know, that's so funny. They tell tales, but you know it the minute they say it. But they're so honest in in being who they are. And, you know, I never put pressure on a pet to talk about what they don't want to talk about. They take the lead. And, you know, sometimes we have some really amusing sessions. Have you know, you, I do mediumship. And have, a lot of times people... Have you, you called a pet out on their lies? <laughs> you also, well, as soon as I tell their parents and the parents get hysterical, the pet will be, you know, kind of, mm, <laughs> okay. That, that's funny. That it is. is. It really is. And there are some funny stories that, that result from, from these encounters. One of my clients, who's kind of a repeat client, was talking with me. His mom had gotten in touch with me. This guy, his name is Snickers. Uh -huh. Snickers lives in Florida. And mom was worried because she had to do some traveling. And she was like, is he going to be okay You know, while I'm gone? And mom was definitely more worried than he was. And so, you know, I asked him and he said, as long as I have my hamburgers and I thought to myself, I know this woman, she does not feed this rabbit hamburgers. Well, yeah. Oh, my That's Lord. Snickers hamburgers, his treats. She had to send me the picture after the session because I said to her, you don't feed him hamburgers, do you? She started to laugh and she said, well, he's right. Those well, are there history. you go. Because I was going to ask you a question. Um, how do you know if your communication is working? So oh, it's perfect. Yeah, it's working. Right <laughs> I mean, because, yeah, 
I mean, it's crazy, but it's true. Oh, I mean, because you can't make this stuff up. You just can't. Yeah. Because yeah. they say the wildest things. Could you give you us know? a little, what do they usually say? How do, what do they say to you? How they communicate with you? I mean, through uh, intuition and that, and you hear things. You know. Yeah. Well, for example, just before Christmas, I got a call from um, a young woman when she was frantic. Her older dog was missing, had been missing for, I think it was about 10 days. And the dog had very bad arthritis and she was concerned. And this is her dog. That's Daisy. And it was really cold um, when this dog was gone. And there had been no no sightings whatsoever. And so I communicated with her and I got a lot of information from her. And I had this feeling that I was being crowded. My shoulders felt crowded. And I asked her, did, did you know, she have a harness on or anything like that? You know, because I kept feeling this pinched feeling. And I was also getting a combination of, of images from the dog. And the dog kept talking to me about bumps and seeing bumps. And, you know, I, I said to the woman, do you see, is there anything around you that she could be talking about bumps? Because sometimes the words that they use are not necessarily the words that we use. And so she said, no, there's nothing bumpy. I said, do you have a cobblestone driveway? Anything like that? No, no, no. And I said to her, and I see these droopy little trees. And, you know, now I'm to the point where I will draw pictures of what I'm seeing. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And so, and I said to her, and I'm seeing this black metal fence nearby, these droopy little trees. She said to me, well, this sounds like my neighbor's yard. She said, but we've been all over there. And it was, oh my gosh, just before Christmas, two days before Christmas, I, I get this wonderful text message I live for these text messages and it's we got her they had gone out she had gone out she um had gone out with one of the vets that she works with and the vet's dog and the other it was 2 a.m they found her this dog had somehow gotten between two fences she was facing the bumps the stone wall oh other side of the black metal fence and up top which you can't see in this picture, were the droopy little trees. Oh, my God. This dog gave me every detail accurately. So she was in between. She was in yes. between those two fences. <gasps> you can't see it from this yeah, yeah, angle. Yeah, but, she was, so she wasn't... but it was about this wide. That's why I was getting all this pressure on her shoulders. Holy crap. Wow, that's amazing. And I described her medical condition so accurately to them yeah. And this was a veterinarian at a vet tech. Oh, they wow. took her into the animal hospital and started to started her care based on what I had told them. That, I mean, that's it's probably that's totally, how dehy accurate totally I dehydrated. Absolutely. But they based her before they even examined her, they started to treat wow. her based on what I had described. Wow. It's it's so my when I get stuff, it's pretty accurate. I'll show you another lost animal because this was another pretty wild one. This was out in California, and it, it was an interesting one. This cat's name was Luna, and she was uh, a cat that was indoor-outdoor. So she came and went sort of as she pleased, but she was gone for close to a month. Her mom and dad were really worried because that was way too long for Luna. And so um, when I work with a lost pet, I always start every session with any animal, whether lost or whatever, with communication. And so I'd gotten a lot of information from Luna, including I was drawing pictures of a place that I saw this old fashioned, what I thought was some sort of farm equipment. And I kept seeing people dressed in old fashioned clothes. I thought they were, I didn't know if they were entertaining people like on a stage or- Could they have been Amish? Pretending something, I, Amish. I didn't know. Oh, you know, okay. I was asking them, I kept thinking of places like, you know, near us, we have Sturbridge Village, a colonial yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, recreation, right. you know, recreation of a village. And so I asked them, I said, do you have anything like that near you? I was explaining, you know, about taking my former students to Sturbridge Village and what it was. And she said, we do. We have a place called Ardenwood. And this was after I had done something called map dowsing. And my I landed on that area when they went to Ardenwood 
because I said to her, I, you know, once I had landed on that area and they told me what it was and about this area, I said, I think you need to go there and find what I'm describing to you because I had drawn so many images of an open area, building here, building there. I saw people sitting on a patio having cold drinks, watching, you know, whatever was going on in the sandy middle area where people were. Mm -hmm. I said, just go over there. I said, because your scent needs to be all over that place. And it was walking distance from where they live. And I said, and just put your oh, scent wow. out. And keep, huh. Just walk back and forth between where you live and that place, where you live and that place. And let's see what happens. So they went. And I got a text message probably another 10 days later. She's home. She walked home. Because they found the farm equipment that I had drawn. They wow. found the layout of that place. And it was, people were pretending to work in a field. That was that open area that I was seeing. And there was a building that served refreshments off to the side and another building where they were storing farm equipment. Those were the two buildings I was seeing on either side of the open area where the people were working or whatever they were doing as part of the entertainment for people who were visiting. So I'm quite accurate with Los That's Pets. pretty like right on. I mean, um, I have an artist friend of mine that's out in Illinois and um, she started out doing her artwork. Then she got into angel art because that's how we met. And she, when she does sessions with people, healing work, she does, she gets their guy, she does artwork also. So you're doing actually almost the same thing. Be interesting for you, maybe down the road, put a book together with. with... Oh, that's in the works. It is. <laughs> See, it I have is. My, my intuitive bulb is going off. <laughs> To um, show that with your pictures and everything of what people would people would love, but I see you would explode being busy with her. You probably are already. Always tell yeah. people though, please forgive my artwork, oh, um, yeah. because it's so bad. Well, it's so it's so enough, bad. It's enough to interpret what it is, though. It's yeah, you know, it's um, very very close to reality in in many cases. You know, this was. Um, this is another interesting one to me. This is Chloe and Chloe had passed away and her family didn't know what had happened. And the vet had thought it was one of two things, but was not exactly sure. And so her family set up a session for me to connect with Chloe on the other side of the bridge. And there is a bridge. I walk pets across that we'll all the time. The rainbow, the rainbow bridge. Yes, it, it is. And I will walk pets across mm -hmm. for people and they weren't sure though what had caused her death why chloe had passed and so i worked with chloe and i went through her body and i drew out these things that and i can remember this conversation with her mom it it that looked like charcoal briquettes that was the only way i could describe this to her mom and I said to her I don't know what this is what I'm seeing but they're also hiding like you could have tried to treat it but they're multiplying exponentially and they hide when you try to treat them and she sent me this picture and oh it was Lord. beeped me right out really because sometimes I scare myself and it looked like what I drew and this was one of the things called insisted strong strong aisles um, and I don't know what that is. I drive my equine clients a little crazy sometimes, my lack of knowledge, but I prefer to stay a blank slate. Um, but she, this was one of the things their vet had said was a possible cause of her death. And that that was it. I was getting a hit like um, when you said it was hiding. It's almost like people that contract Lyme disease. And it's those yeah. infections and they could treat it with the, the the regular routine antibiotics and things. And then it kills something, but then they hide behind the organs and they come out. Okay, oh, exactly. And and I kept seeing that in her intestines, but go, but hiding itself every time they tried to do something to treat it. It's I mean, it's, yeah, it's wild. Is it's there wild. Like, I don't know if we want to say a generality that. Pets would like to communicate to us as the human people taking care of them, you know, like a general, is there like a general denominator of what they would like us to know from their world to us? Yes, I'd say they want to, they want us to remember 
they're there and they're listening. You know, we talk about them sometimes like, you know, and I say we, not necessarily you and me, but yeah, right. like, you know, they're a piece of furniture, you know, like they don't have feelings, they don't have thoughts, they don't have ideas or opinions of their own. And, and they do, you know, and, and they are listening to what we say, you know, about them, um, about their lives and decisions that we're making that include them. Mm -hmm. You know, so sometimes people will call me and they'll say, I don't know, you know, so-and-so is acting weird and I don't know why. And, you know, so can you help me with this? You know, and I think it's this. And yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it is that what you think it is. Maybe it's not, you know, like this guy. That's Twig. He's an off-track thoroughbred. He lives down in Kentucky. Um, and Twig's mom called me one time and said, something's up with Twig. He's not right. You know, he's just, he's, everything is off with him. I don't know what's going on. And as soon as I worked with Twig, you know, Twig is sweet, you know, and, and that's his whole personality. But I said to her, he's ornery. What's going on? And she said, yes. And, and I'm, I'm, as I'm telling you the story, I'm getting the fit physical sensation that I got during that call with her, which was these fingers were bothering me, like and to the extent that I kept oh, banging this, them on this, my so, desk. Yeah, yeah. And I said to her, there is something up with this his hoof, his hoof. Hoof in the in the front right foreleg. And I said, and it's bothering me. And I said to her, and my back is bothering me. And my right around my mid back down to my lower back, I said, and I don't know why. I said, but I'm, I go, keep going back here. And she said to me, I said, what's changed? What's different? Because I'm pulling here in my right foreleg. What, what, what's different here? What happened? And she said to me, six weeks ago, she said, I had his shoes, shoes changed. And I said, okay. And she said, but it was a different barrier. And she said, he had a different type of shoe not the regular shoes that the regular farrier puts on. It was a different brand. Uh -huh. And I guess he's sensitive. Well, this was the culprit. Wow. They had the regular farrier come back out. Regular farrier took those shoes off, put the regular shoes on. It was like the magic wand. Night, night he was back day. to his old self. Amazing. It, it's wild. You know, it, it, the least little thing. But it bothered him. And, yeah. you know, and it was really a minor decision. Mm -hmm. And yet for him, it was major. Sure. Because it affected his whole personality. You know, I'm just, it's, it's, it's pretty wild sometimes. Like this guy, this is Ollie. He was a lot of horses, track. huh? I do. I love, they're my second favorite breed next to dogs. <laughs> um, he's an off track thoroughbred. And uh -huh. all of a sudden he started getting really bitey. And so I went down to see him. He was uh, in a barn here in Connecticut at the time. And I was like halfway down the aisle and I said, what's up with his jaw? And I said, what do you mean? And I said, my jaw is killing me. It, what is going, what did you do? And they had changed out his bit. Plus he was due to have his teeth trimmed. Uh... And it, you know, and so with him, that was what it was. They needed to change the bit. Wow. And they needed to trim his teeth. And it was funny, too. He kept showing me something red and white. And I said to them, does he have a favorite blanket? What's red and white? What's red and white? And there was nothing red and white at all. And somebody did some research. And sure enough, let me dig out this because it's a good one. If you look at the video, he's the horse on the end and his racing silks are red and white oh wow <laughs> so he remembered his racing days not that wow. he necessarily missed them but yeah mm -hmm. he remembered those racing days another question for you um when you have like i heard different things with uh pets being a lot of times people think oh my dog is lonely or so-and-so's lonely. i should get another dog and does that make them more anxious or do they like it or 
It just depends. Some do, some don't. Some do and some don't. So it just depends like kids or anything it else. It depends on the individual pet. And how you do know? you feel about, first of all, I think, well, of course, I grew up in the generation where we all had um, mutts. They were called mutts. Right. Now, they're, now they're considered designer dogs that cost $4,000. I mean, when I grew up, they were mutts and they were cute. <laughs> Because people weren't spading, you'd always have litters of puppies and stuff like They're that. They're all American you know? now. Yeah. And it's like, wow. Oh, how do you feel about, um, I heard different things where it was a doctor talked once that you shouldn't have your pets in your bedroom with you because their sleep style and yours is different. So even though you're sleeping as a human, they get up and turn and, and you know, so you're subconsciously aware of that. I don't Any honestly have a chance to sleep by myself. <laughs> I mean, I don't think, and you know what? I don't think I could. No, I'm saying, is it better? We've humanized, you know, our house pets so much that we've given them our diseases. I, I really, yes. really feel that we've done all that. You didn't hear about all that stuff years ago. You know, of course, they no, might, no, but I think we have, we have put ourselves on them. And in uh, a lot of ways, we have. You know, yeah. we, the we, we diagnose them, they're the neuroses, neuroses, all and, of that. And they do, they do pick us up. They pick up on that energy. They absolutely do. We're all energetic beings. So is it better for them to sleep in their area? And they're, are they more comfortable having their bed space in that? Versus, you know? I think the best decision is for everybody to make their own choices. Make their own, yeah. Humans and pets. Mm -hmm. You know, if, I mean... My dog is free to do whatever he wants to do. Mm -hmm. You know, if he wants to get on the bed, great. If he wants to get off, that's also his choice. You know, yeah, he has beds yeah. scattered <laughs> everywhere, as you might well imagine. So, and sometimes he does. Sometimes he gets off and he goes and lies on the rug, or he goes into his bed, or maybe he goes onto the, the floor because it's cooler at night. But most of the time he stays up on the bed, but... It's not enforced. Have you found with um, pet owners that have lost, uh, you know, lost one of their pets, dog, dog or cat, and then they get another one, and that because I firmly believe in reincarnation and coming back, that they have communicated with you that they are the former that they've come back. I have worked with pets who have had past lives, you know, and shown me that they are influenced by the past. Do yes. they come back to the same family? Will they come back to the same family? Does Mine did. Pet? Yeah. Mine did. You know, yeah. my, my, the one that I lost um, in October of 2021, the wild story is, you know, I lost him. He was very special to me. He was the fifth Shetland sheep dog that I had had, but he was the very first one that I could hear mm -hmm. since I started this whole animal communication business. And so when I lost him, it was certainly a blow to me in very many ways. I think his name was Stitch. Stitch had more social media followers than I did. And so I had one of my friends out in California who's a communicator work with him. And when Michael was working with him, Michael said, he says he's coming back. And I said to him, I don't want to hear this. And he, Michael said, I just don't get upset. Don't get upset. But, you know, he says he's coming back. And so... I said, well, does he say when? And he said, spring. And I said, okay. And so then um, I was on a call with a client who is a psychic medium in Florida. Mm -hmm. And this was a couple of months after Stitch passed. And she said to me, it, she was calling because her pet was crossing. And so she wanted me to walk him across the bridge. So this is her appointment. And she said to me, I have to tell you this. And I said, what? She said, I don't normally hear animals, but I hear your dog. And I said, what? And she said, he says he's coming back. And I said, so I hear. And she <laughs> said, he says, April, May, April, May. And at this point, I'm, well, this is happening. And so I, at that point, I hadn't talk, tried to talk to him myself because I was so upset. And I thought, okay, now I really have to talk with him. And so I did. And he was telling me, yes, that he was returning. And so, I, you know, I started to ask questions like specifically, when are you coming back? Can you tell me where? How am I going to find you? 
you know, all the sorts of things that you would ask. And the dog that I have currently is very, I mean, I know Stitch is still in spirit. Yes. But I also know that my current dog is Louie, that yeah. there is quite a bit of Stitch with Louie. I have to tell you this quick story. So the house I sold and the people that moved in, I got to, you know, I met them. And since the, actually Victor's my wonderful, I call him my uh, pod, uh, production angel for for the podcast and that he became my friend. <laughs> that's another story. But when I went to their, their house, that was my house, I go up on the porch and I ring the door and I hear, you know, I hear a barking. And I said, oh my God, my former dog that's now in spirit um, that had lived there, uh, Raleigh, is the dog that's there. His name is Ziggy. It is identical. Wow. I'll show you. This is this is my. I don't have the pic. This is was my dog Raleigh. Oh my god, he's adorable. He looked like Benji. He was a rescue. He does. He was the smartest, smartest dog. He was like he was human. He, he of course, that's the mother's prejudice, but no. <laughs> and Ziggy was like I said. Oh my god, Ra- I, I mean, I got. I started crying. Yeah. Like, oh my god. Ziggy, you're rolling, rolling, you Ziggy. It, you know, he's a smaller version of him, but, I, and I said, isn't that something? He came and he's living in the house again <laughs> with different parents, but yeah, um, I know, I know that's him, you know. But or, they do. Or, yeah. I mean, and they send us their, their signs to let us know that they're around us. I oh, mean, yeah. it started the day he crossed. I used to take him to the mailbox every day. And he, he lost the use of his back legs before he crossed. And the day he crossed, I went down to the mailbox by myself. And I said to him, well, mail boy, I'm doing your job. And when I got down to the mailbox, something hit me in the face. And I went like this. And it was a ladybug. I didn't think anything of it. I walked back up to the house, went to open the door. And there was another ladybug on the door. Still didn't get the message. <laughs> Duh. And I went up to the bedroom, the windows were open, and I kept hearing ping, ping, ping on the screen. And I looked, and there had to be 20 ladybugs wow. on the screen. And I finally, finally got it. And I said, Okay, Stitch, mommy sees you. That's why I wear the ladybug. Ah. So that's his calling card, you know, but they do, they send us these little I'm, gl- I'm glad you're sharing that because people get that with humans. You and know. People, and people get crazy. Like, oh my God, are they going to contact me? Am I going to, what if I don't, what if I don't get it? What if I miss it? You know, you're not going to miss it, you know, because they'll tell uh, me when I work with them, this little girl, this is summer. She yeah. just passed two weeks ago Yeah, and her she- parents contacted me two days after they lost her and it was sudden as could be absolutely out of the blue totally unexpected and i said to them i hear something jingling and pink flowers pink pink flowers jingling her father used to walk her every morning next day he walks down the street minus summer that's on the ground oh her mother comes home from work that evening someone sent her a wind chime a memorial wind chime. They send us these signs. And I always say, open your eyes. They're there. Because sometimes they'll tell me what their signs are going to be. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you just, they're there. Thanks for sharing that because that does happen. You know, I share it with people and I've shared through the years with us as humans when we cross over and everybody wants to know if their loved one is okay. And they hear, so you're saying the same thing happens with our, our pets. They have the message they're they're happy and they're okay. And they go to a, into their place. And they say we get rejoined with them when we cross over yes. that they're there for us. All of our pets collectively will come and they're see. They're there and they're like with the, the glass people menagerie. That, that, yeah. that we love, you know, because that's a, a question I get a lot when I'm working with a pet who's already crossed. Are they alone? And it, sometimes they're with other pets, but other times they're with people. Or they'll go and with they, your family right? members yeah. that have crossed. And it might not be people that they knew during their lifetimes. Mm-hmm. I worked with this one young lady. It, it was it was a, an awful situation. Her dog had run out the door and been hit by a car. And it was it was just a gruesome situation for her. And so I worked with her after. 
And she said, is he alone? And I said, I see a woman with him. And I described the woman to her. The woman was dressed in 1940s style clothing, um, you know, blonde hair. I was able to describe the outfit she had on. And she said to me, you're describing my father's mother. And she said, but the dog never knew her. I said, yeah, the doesn't, they know. They, yeah. The dog. yeah. Isn't that wonderful? You know, that woman they, was with her dog, taking care of her dog. Well, we could go on and on and, you know, I'd love to have you back in the future and that, but we have a time limit here too. As I absolutely would love um, to come back. Yes. And um, the show is, you know, we're called Beacons of Balance and the purpose of the show is to, you know, we are, this world is so, especially now we're really in the world of the crazies, but to balance that because we always, there's a dark side, there's a light and it's making choices and how to be in balance. What could you share with our audience to, how could they be people be in balance with their pets? Is there something that you could say to, you know, because some people go really crazy with their, their, I'd say neuroses of, <laughs> you know, they dress their pets up, they put them in the thing, you know, they may not want to have that. All, you know, no, you know <laughs> a lot of people think that they do need to do that mm -hmm. in order to have their pet happy. Yeah. And, you know, it has to be something super elaborate. And you know what? It, that's not the case. Your pets just want to be with you. That's what they're most grateful for. And, you know, because I'll have people say, oh, you know, do I have to do this? Do I have to do that? Do I have to do the other thing? And it doesn't have to be some magical trip to Disney World for your pets. Exactly. They just want the love just like they do. Be with right? you. Yeah. Be with you. Spend time with you. That's for your pet. That's gold. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing your abilities and you are special and you have a special gift. It's wonderful. And sharing all the stories with us and, um, you know, blessings for the future on your path. And we'll Thank have your you. information. Um, your the best way of getting hold of you is your yes. email. Email. Yeah, I'm on my website is zenzuac.com and I'm all over social media as well. Um, Instagram, TikTok. Facebook, Twitter, um, zenzuac.com. Okay, we'll, Victor will add that at the bottom of this. And thank you so much for coming with thank us. Thank you so come. much for and having me. And I'd like to thank our thank audience. You. Thank you for, for watching, listening. Spread the word. Subscribe down below. Help us grow. We'd love that. And always remember to be the change that you want to see. And from our hearts to yours, we send you out love. And hi and bye to Linda. Good luck with the book signing. She's doing book signing today. So, okay. Much success. Thanks so much, Mary. Thanks for Thank spending you. time with us. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.